All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Inside Participate live stream. We're also streaming live on Steve Isaac's Twitch channel. Uh, be sure if you're not following us on either of those channels, uh, you got to do that, folks, because that's how you get notified when we go live and when things start happening. Uh, we did the Gone Home game study yesterday at three. And listen, if it, you got to go back, you got to find us on YouTube. You got to you got to go and watch that video uh, because we had um, uh, we had Carla, who was the co lead developer of Gone Home on the live stream with us. Uh, and talking us through, watching me screw up playing her her video game, um, you know, and it was it was a whole lot of fun, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we got some neat insights too, and just the behind the scenes stuff and the game design kind of stuff, and and you know some of the uh, impetus behind you know the notes and all sorts of neat things in the game. It was great. It was pretty wild, and so we're here this morning, uh, and uh, we're we're with Ido. Ido is the CEO of Coder Z. Uh, welcome to the show, you know. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. <clears throat> We're excited yeah. too. So, so Steve, why don't you introduce you sure. uh, a little bit? Tell us your background. Uh, uh, you know him. Yeah. So I was introduced to Ido a while ago um, because of my involvement, uh, particularly at the time with esports and education. And um, Ido was introduced to me because not only does he have this great virtual coding platform for robotics, but they were um, kind of dipping their toes in uh, esports and sort of looking, if if I understand it correctly, like at the model, kind of like you know we have these robotics competitions and all this, and why not take that kind of online? So they've developed all these neat challenges and things that lend really well to that idea. So it sort of bridges, you know, robotics and esports and all of that, and you know, <laughs> at a time like this right now, um, their platform is especially interesting to me because it's all online. Like you don't need the physical hardware of the robots and such to to fully engage in these challenges and activities and learn coding and all that. So right. um, I really loved it when I first saw the product. Uh, so when we started these streams, I was you know thinking we got to have Edo on and, and show this off to uh, to all the people at home that are looking for great enriching. Um, fun activities to be doing at this time. Amazing, amazing. So, you know, why don't you just uh, dive right in? Go ahead and, and tell us, uh, let's start from the start. Tell us a little bit about the, the platform and then uh, let's dig into it. Sure. So, um, <clears throat> um, just a, a little bit of background about uh, about us and how we got to, to develop the platform. And then, uh, um, so, uh, uh, Coderzi is part of um, a, a, an organization called Intellitech, and Intellitech is in technical, technological education for over 35 years. Um, we cover um, subjects for, like robotics, like uh, coding, like uh, other types of, uh, of CAD, CAM, and, and, and those types of uh, subjects uh, from uh, middle school all the way to post-secondary. And uh, we got into robotics probably around close to 15 years ago, uh, working a lot with FIRST and VEX. And uh, uh, we had some of uh, some uh, products that uh, were the, uh, um, you know, initial product uh, software that, that VEX used to work with and, and the first comprehensive curriculum that VEX yeah. worked with. And, and one of the things that we quickly realized is that we were having great implementation in a lot of schools and, and you know, we, we'd come in, we'd have, uh, uh, you know, a high school set up uh, an elective of, of engineering and uh, they invest quite a sizable amount of money. And then at the end of it, you'd have 20 students that would participate. Um, and, and that was kind of it. And, and I think that one of the things that we were challenged with is how do you get robotics to be something that every single student can um experience and be exposed to and and you know the, the question that you ask yourself is okay what are the what are the kind of the barriers for 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 letting that happen and and one is uh, obviously to see um what schools already have uh which is you know internet and um <clears throat> And a lot of schools are moving into a one-to-one -one mode. So uh, if you have something that is online, uh, you could uh, 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 practically reach uh, uh, a lot more students. And then second would be, uh, how do you work with teachers who are not from that first 
kind of circle of, of engineering. And um, uh, in that sense, how do you make this something uh, more comfortable, more uh, easier for, for teachers to kind of onboard? Um, so, so those were kind of the first obstacles that we kind of uh, uh, were working with. And then afterwards, uh, like Steve uh, alluded to, it's how do you make this fun and, uh, <laughs> and motivate right, the students right. to keep going, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, so this is this is kind of really the uh, um, uh, the background, and uh, we we've been uh, you know we've had um, we've had a, a good kind of back and forth with uh, uh, instructors uh, uh, throughout the country on on kind of getting a sense of what you know how, how this would work better for them and 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 what are the tools that they need in order to make this a good experience, and also learning a lot from students. So we uh, I think we changed. Uh, uh, the way that we designed the platform quite a few times uh, in these past few years, just on feedback. And, and that's part of developing uh, a product until you get it right, until you kind of, uh, you know, the, the, you, you kind of get to, you try to, to get to the right recipe, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> So, um, we, we, you know, one of the things that, that has really, uh, um, as Steve mentioned, that has kind of uh, 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 highlighted the, uh, um, the, 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 what I think, you know, I, I call it a paradigm shift, but what has highlighted the, the, the real need for something like this is, has been this, you know, unfortunate period of, of COVID when suddenly you say, okay, um, you know, schools are shutting down and, and we need to move to another, um, mode of learning. And, um, you know, the question that you ask yourself is, okay, this is something that, uh, you know, everybody already has uh, e-learning and everybody already has these remote learning technologies. So this must be an easy shift. Well, you know, you look at what's happening a few weeks after we're in this and, uh, uh, you know, you, you realize very quickly that it's, uh, it's, it's been quite a challenge and, um, and yeah. it's, it's taking schools a lot of time to, to um, you know, kind of plan and understand how to roll out, uh, um, uh, you know, learning throughout this period. And um, I, I think that what we did, um, and, and we were fortunate to, to, to partner and, and, and to, to be sponsored by, by Amazon Future Engineer um, at this time, uh, is to, you know, just at the kind of the offset when schools were starting to shut down, we just said, hey guys, here it is. This is our platform. It's available for everybody. We quickly um, added more content. We were mostly focused on, on middle school. We, we added content for elementary and we added content for, for high school as well. Um, and we said <clears throat> the platforms um, is, is, uh, uh, is fully available. And uh, um, just to kind of uh, so these are, these are the four kind of programs that we've uh, uh, opened up. So it starts with uh, um, Coder Z Adventure for, for elementary, and then we have uh, Cyber Robotics 101 and Cyber Robotics 102, which are, you know, kind of a, an introductory course in middle school, a little bit more advanced course. And Ooh, we have Python, Python Gym. Nice. So this is a kind of an exercise area for, um, for Python. And, and, and again, I want to Kind of uh, uh, thank uh, uh, Amazon again for for uh, for their uh, sponsorship because it makes it uh, uh, available for uh, schools, individuals, clubs. Uh, so whoever uh, uh, whoever wants to uh, kind of learn how to code, it, it's it's available. Uh, um, uh, you know, for, for all this uh, all this uh, uh, for for the past two or three weeks already. That's amazing. Yes. And if I could could touch on one thing that that um you know, piggybacks on a lot of what you're saying is, I think while it's been very challenging, um, one of the things we're trying to do, I think with this stream is really um, amplify the idea of choice in learning, which I think is gonna be one of the most exciting sort of, you know, unanticipated outcomes that comes out of this um, difficult and terrible situation is that I think we're starting to see that we wanna give kids more choice. And, you know, here's an opportunity with Coder Z for kids to say, hey, you know, I'd like to learn about robotics and now maybe I have this opportunity. So I hope that more and more educators start to say, hey, you know, and I have seen educators talking about moving towards a model of passion projects while kids are at home and things. And I think so many possibilities are, are coming about. And um, I'm really glad that we have you here today 
to show this because I think it's going to turn a number of people on to uh, something they might not have known existed. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I think I think the challenge in, in, in this time, you know, obviously choice is 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 you know is is super important, and and but it's even even going backwards, uh, uh, you know, a step backwards and saying, um, is everybody aware that these things exist? Um, you know, uh, uh, because um, uh, again, of of STEM, when you think of, of robotics, especially, you think of that uh, elective in school and, and that you know that that lab. Or you think of your uh, competition team, um, which all you know, kind of uh, um, uh, uh, th- that that's what comes up when you think about robotics, and and you don't necessarily think of uh, having a um, an online option uh, that you can learn with, you can play with, and 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 you can also compete with. So so this is kind of a a, a, um, a, a big uh, a, a big shift. Um, and, and I think that that what we're seeing right now with with the availability of this is we're seeing you know a huge uh, a number of uh, uh, um, of schools. We, we we have more than fifty five hundred schools that have uh, registered uh, uh, in one way or another, and and it, you know it could be um, a student and their parents that that you know uh, uh, do this at home, or it could be an entire school that that. Um, Kind of rolls this out and, and makes this into a, an activity during uh, uh, these uh, weeks, and then you see how they progress uh, uh, week after week. So, so it's it's you know I I, I find it to be uh, uh, amazing. Um, uh, we always have to think about the equity aspect of this, and 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 to understand that <clears throat> although this makes it a lot more um, inclusive, there are still those that. Uh, May not have you know uh, access to a computer or access to Wi-Fi, and 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 uh, um, and, and that's something that that you know uh, hopefully um, uh, you know throughout this COVID uh, crisis, that's something that that uh, um, you know we, we could all kind of push for uh, some sort of solution through um, uh, uh, through the education budget, so so we can uh, um, resolve that and have more uh, um, more access and more uh, inclusiveness in that sense. So, Dave, okay. uh, the early element, the elementary school track that you have there, it's it's geared. What what grades are are it is it geared towards? You know, elementary school is a little bit um, more vague than than uh, I think. Some folks are just curious. Um, you know, how early uh, can can do you would you suggest um, kids can start using this? So uh, we, we you know, I mean, we can start uh, <clears throat> third to fifth grade. I, I guess that's that's kind of the uh, <clears throat> the area we we, we um, made this platform, you know, super, uh, super simple. And, and I'll and I'll show um, I'll be able to show some of uh, some of the missions here. Uh, we, we called it adventure in a sense that, you know, you can see how students are going through these different uh um, these, these different kind of sceneries or, 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 uh, different, uh, uh, so that they start with, uh, uh, Adventure Peak and Frozen Island and, and Lost City. So it, it's, it, it makes it something that, uh, they can also, uh, um, uh, easily, you know, kind of relate to a lot of these, uh, uh, uh images and, and to the graphics, uh, Candy Town. Uh, we also added, uh, uh some, 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 uh, uh, drawing. Um, and when you look at, um, the activities um, we, we we've uh, uh, made this um, very very simple in the sense that the coding uh, a part of this is um, uh, uh, all the blocks are are you know readily available and um, and uh, um, uh, you, you don't have too much of a choice. So so when when you look at the missions. Uh, as opposed to some of the other more advanced where you have a, a choice of a lot of blocks here you'd have you know just a few uh, blocks to choose from so you'd have your your drive and then your turn um, and and, uh, and the data blocks and, and with this you'd go about and and uh, and, and solve it um, the other thing that we've added to some of these missions is uh, so just you know just a uh, uh, Taking a look at, at the graphics here, which I found, uh, to, you know, to be nice and, and uh, uh, also to kind of uh, 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 draw the attention and, and interest of, of, uh, of students. Um, um, the other thing that we did here is we've added uh, a kind of a, 
a, a, a pad where you can uh, use this for calculations. So we, we kind of blended math yeah. as well. So uh, when, when you look at this and you're saying, okay, I need to turn uh, and then uh, I need to move. So how do I know when I stop? So, you know, you have your, uh, this is a distance of four, but you, you have this uh, uh, symbol of one here. So if I subtract one from four, I probably know where I should stop. And this is kind of the distance where I should uh, uh, start turning. And, and then, you know, so you, you, you kind of uh, um, um, uh, um, use, you, you combine the, the, uh, um, the, the, the logic, the sequence of, of code, the, 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 the computational thinking, but you also uh, um, blend math into it and make it into an activity that uh, uh, um, uh, students can, can uh, kind of work with. So um, th this is, you know, it, it's, it's definitely something. And, and, and we, we added this program and, and the gym. Um, uh, we were working on it in the background, but we didn't plan to release until uh, the fall. And uh, due to the uh, um, to the shutdown of schools and, and our our you know our desire to participate in, in kind of uh, uh, providing this uh, uh, content, so we, we came out of it with this uh, um, a lot earlier than we uh, expected, and, and we were kind of working with uh, some schools uh, on getting feedback as we were going through this, and, and you know uh, uh, making changes kind of on the go. But but it was lots of fun to to. Uh, be able to um, uh, to to you know to go through this and then to provide all these different types of uh, of uh, um, options for for kids. So uh, a, couple, a couple questions are coming up, I guess, in the chat, um, and and I have a comment too that I think is um, you know I I love that the environments look so nice. I think that that's a big deal. I think that's a big deal to kids. So one of the things that um, you'll find a lot of game-based learning educators talk about is that if if it doesn't look like a game that is like vi the aesthetics are important as much as, um, you know, these hardcore like education researcher type people will talk about like pedagogical whatever and like game-based learning research and this and that, um, how it looks matters. Um, kids will not play a game that doesn't look like a game and that doesn't look fun. It has to look fun. And also, this, look, this looks fun. Yeah. What I like also is I'm just thinking from a perspective of engaging, you know, um, you know, all, you know, male, female, you know, all, all um, diversity and such. I think it looks very appealing. And I think that's important because sometimes we associate, you know, robotics and stuff you know, with a more male audience and, and we want to move away from that for sure. So the other, there's another question in the chat and I think that this is something we should get into uh, a little bit or at least clear up. Um, is is Coder Z COPA compliant? Yeah, so we, we, um, uh, we have a whole kind of uh, a part on the website on, on privacy, on COPA, on FERPA, uh, we've gone through, um, you know, processes internally to, to um, uh, you know, to train the staff and, and to make sure that, that everything is, is uh, done by the book. Um, it, it was, uh, you know, for us uh, dealing a lot with, uh, with uh, uh, lots of hardware and, and, and other type of project. This was uh, something new, but we've, uh, we've adjusted to it in the past, uh, you know, 12, 18 months. And then we've been... Uh, 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 you know, we, we, we keep reviewing and making sure that we're up to date on on, uh, on everything uh, concerning COPA. Some states have, um, and there's just one specific person asking because he's he's noticed something about uh, it looking uh, looking into data data asking for data birth, um, which is I think a COPA issue in some states uh, with privacy uh, and getting permission slips. Uh, even in high school, I guess, or something like that. So we might want to follow up on that because I think that's an interesting question. Um, uh, and maybe Dave, you can you can um, add more in the chat to to what you're talking about related to data birth. Um, but that's interesting. Okay. Wait, the, the only thing that you know the process here, and and this is the the only thing that that is asked uh, of students, and this is uh, uh, mostly when when you you know when you register in in on 
as a student on their own or uh, you know as part of a classroom not necessarily as part of a district then then uh, a student will be asked if they are over or under 13 and I, I don't think that there's any place there that you add the date of birth. I don't think that that uh, uh, is part of the information that's being uh, uh, asked. And the only reason is because if you're under 13, then you go through a certain process that the system issues uh, a request uh, to uh, your parent to provide consent. And if not, then you can just go in and continue to, um, you know, to, to uh, play with, uh, with the system. Perfect. Yeah. So, so th this was the um, this was the uh, um, uh, elementary, and um, um, you know the other thing that that is that is pretty cool. Uh, I really like this is the um, you know drawing uh, uh, missions. So you have this uh, um, you know you have this uh, uh, kind of. Uh, uh, notebook paper, and uh, you have your uh, um, EV3 Lego robot, and uh, you know you could have something that is pre-designed for you. And uh, are you hungry? Yum! You know, kind of figure out how to how to draw this uh, on your own, or or you could have um, a uh, you know just a, a freestyle. And we've been seeing, you know, we've getting a lot of pictures from from teachers that are just uh, having their students, uh, uh, you know, at this time just uh, draw something and 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 send it to us. Uh, so I, I like the the you know the part where you can uh, you can share um, you, you can do this. You know, there's something uh, very technical about uh, uh, the coding aspect that at some point students need. You know, to to kind of take a, a moment to to you know kind of change the the uh, their their thought process and say, okay, I want to I want to do something a little bit more creative. So you have these um, these project environments where you can you can draw, and then you know after you you've done one or two of these, you go back and you solve some of these uh, challenges, which uh, which are uh, kind of uh, I guess you know exercising different muscles in in, in the brain, right? I, I love this. And it brings me right back to my uh, MSW logo days, which I'm sure there's some inspiration behind this from, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, you, you know the the, the cre create being creative is 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 uh, uh, is super important, and 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 uh, you know it, it ties nicely with. Uh, I think you you you're, you're a better coder if you think creatively as well. So it's, it's uh, yeah. So um, just, uh, you know, just to, uh, I'll just uh, kind of use this to, to kind of move between the different uh, 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 programs. So, so the next one is, is, the, is the 101. And, and if you think about it, the, in, in the elementary, um, all you do is, is, is you, you, you navigate. So you, you look about, you talk about moving uh, uh, forwards and backwards and turning. And you go through math, uh, uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. You you get introduced to angles, which is uh, uh, you know in 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 um, in, in a cool way. Um, but we don't have any um, any sensors. Um, uh, it's more about a kind of orientation of, of where you are um, and, and, and solving uh, um, uh, challenges which are uh, um, a little bit more uh, simple and, and, and using the math to, to, to be kind of your, uh, uh, your main tool to, um, uh, to solve uh, uh, challenges with, uh, with, um, uh, with navigation. And in, in 101, we, um, we, we basically were saying, okay, instead of measuring um, using a ruler um, or, um, or uh, you know, uh, other tools, uh, let's, let's do that using um, uh, sensors. So this is, this is pretty much the, um, uh, the difference. I just want to quickly show how this, uh, um, going back to the adventure, so um, what I have here is I have these different tools that I can use for, so I, I can verify the distance here. I can uh, check, um, I, I can uh, uh, check uh, angles and through that uh, uh, make a me measurement of angles. So I have these uh, uh, cool tools that I can use in order to collect information um, and when I get to the more advanced program um, in uh, in 101, then here I I want to start using 
um, uh, uh, my, my, my sensors. So uh, let me see where we can find. Uh, so I won't lie. I won't lie. This is so much better than actual Lego robotics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll say anyone who has, um, <laughs> I don't really enjoy, um, EV3. Uh, it's my least favorite code, like robotics platform. I would do this all day with kids, uh, where I actually find actual Lego robotics, not very fun at all. But I, I think I would enjoy it so much more like this. <laughs> yeah, I, I might have to agree. <laughs> That's so, all I'm thinking right now. I'm <laughs> thinking how much I hate EV3 yeah. and how much I would actually enjoy and, doing this. <laughs> and you might not have even known how much you hated it until you saw it. Oh, my God. I don't like EV3 at all, but this looks fun. I, I so I guys I, I, I want to be fair to the you know to the physical robots and and uh, as well as to the virtual ones but uh, I, I think you know that there is there is uh, we, we're dealing with different types of um, of uh, a different type of learning so so here uh, you know you're problem solving you're, you're kind of trying to figure out okay how do I get out of this maze what do I need to do to get maximum points I, this is all gamified and 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 um, and, and but but you're not dealing with a lot of the um, design and engineering aspects that you may be dealing with on, on a physical robot. So so I, I think that you know the the, the, the platform complements a lot of what you're doing in 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 the physical world. And and uh, uh, you know you can't take uh, uh, away from the engineering learning that you do with a, with a physical platform. But definitely and 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 this we see a lot. I mean, in most of the uh, competitions, you have um, you have uh, um, uh, uh, students that are just refusing to do the autonomous uh, part and re are refusing to code because they, they they don't like it. They like the the, the build aspect. And here, you as a, as an individual student, you're you're basically you're forced to solve problems. So um, it, it's something that is you know completely uh, uh, different. Um, I, so, I will uh, give I will give all due respect to physical robots. I I love physical robots. I just hate EV three. Yeah. <laughs> just just a, just to pile on the hot take even more. Yeah. Uh, I I listen. I love Dash. I I like Mbot. I like Cody Rocky. Uh, my my jam is Metatalab. It's a it's a kind of a K to two coding platform. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, hate EV three. Carry on. This is really good. <laughs> okay. So, so, Mike, so, Mike, how do you feel about the uh, Lego EV3, though? Oh. <laughs> don't start. Not good, man. Not, not fun at Sorry. all. So uh, there's there's people that love EV3. Like, it, it's funny. Rami Gaddis, the CEO of Logics Academy, um, <laughs> always used to fight with me about EV3 because that's how he started with educational robotics. Like, that's what how Logics Academy came about and i'm like no dude what's it like to be so wrong <laughs> anyways uh this this though again this i could do this with with my classes when i was doing educational robotics i i would do this this is great guys so, so what i wanted to show you here is um you know how do we learn about uh the ultrasonic sensor right so ultrasonic sensor is is uh um complex um uh, a complex sensor to 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 teach and and uh um uh, i always have this visual um that that i see a teacher holding you know a, a robot uh with a small piece of cardboard and they say you see as i'm moving the robot towards the cardboard uh, you know the value here on the small screen that only i can see uh uh you know is is uh, reduces and 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 you know therefore i can use the ultrasonic sensor to to take measurements and to avoid objects and so on and so on and 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 it, you know it, it's difficult unless a student holds a robot and does the same thing it's difficult for them to experience that what we've done here is we've we've taken uh, this is you know a challenge, but the, the only challenge here that we uh, ask the students is to kind of uh, move around with the with the robot, and, and what they can see is that 
uh, beyond a certain uh, point, the ultrasonic sensor is not effective. So I, I have the measurement here, but nothing is happening because I'm, I'm too far away from, from the object, which is the wall uh, uh, over here. Once I uh, get to the 250 mark, which is right here, then you can start see, uh, seeing in real time that uh, the numbers here are changing and that there is a correlation between uh, the balloons here and the reading on the sensor itself. Um, so, you know, when you, when you kind of uh, uh, walk students through this, you're saying, hey, look at this tool. So now, after we've gone through this and, and we understand that, that, you know, what the meaning of, of these uh, numbers are, now we can go and, and start using this in, um, in different types of challenges and, uh, um, and, and, and understand what, you know, what, what the ultrasonic sensor is, is, is used for and how we can uh, um, implement that. So here, here we're just um, uh, kind of demoing the use of that. And in, in other missions, uh, you're gonna have uh, obviously uh, explanation of how to use the code. You can see here that th there, there's no code needed. It's just complete this mission using manual control, no code needed. So th the whole idea is just to kind of get the experience of, um, of, of you know, uh, what the ultrasonic sensor does. So I, I, I like this as, as a method of, of, um, of kind of uh, showing students how to, uh, um, how to understand a concept like a sensor. Um, and, and the fact that each student does this on their own, um, uh, uh, it, 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 it does something to the learning um, uh, process because it, it, mm -hmm. you know, one, they're not judged, they, they feel very confident, they feel like they're, uh, um, they're in an environment that they can, uh, uh, you know, go through trial and error as much as they need to. Um, and they don't need to fear that, that kind of uh, peer pressure or, or, you know, to feel that they're being judged by, by someone. Um, uh, and, and the fact that it's in a, in a gamified environment makes them feel uh, also uh, comfortable and, 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 and fun. Um, yep. Yeah, we got a question about what I if it's web-based, uh, will it work on a tablet? So we, we have, this is a great question. I mean, so far, because we have not been um, in uh, uh, elementary, we have kind of steered away from, from tablets. We've just, uh, you know, any kind of Chromebook uh, uh, or, or uh, we'll have to think about that, you know, now that we have uh, elementary and see how much uh, that is going to be required. But uh, from, from our middle schools, uh, that was, you know, maybe, I don't know, uh, uh, once every uh, uh, while, we'd, we'd hear something, but most of the middle schools would have either Chromebooks or computer labs. Yeah, I think yeah. as long as it works on Chromebooks, uh, you're in pretty good shape because that's the the sometimes limiting factor. And, and schools have, you know, oodles and oodles and oodles of Chromebooks. So that's a safe bet. Yeah. Um, so, um, let me see, I'm trying to think what else I want to share here. So just, you know, let's talk a little bit about the teacher. Uh, teachers uh, are, are, are super important. Um, so uh, a few things just to, to, um, to show here. So one is the kind of the, uh, uh, the self-directed learning or, or the aspects of, of what uh, um, students see when, when, they, uh, when they enter into, into a mission. Um, I'm, I'm restarting the mission so it will look like the first time that a student gets it. They have a lot of these pop-up balloons which uh, kind of uh, give them the instructions and, and tell them what uh, each block, uh, um, um, you know, does or, or means. Um, uh, here we have, uh, uh, um, you know, th this is milliseconds, which is used uh, as part of the Lego uh, um, uh, uh, terminology. And so we give, you know, kind of an explanation of what that is. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a, a drive forward, you know, a stop, a drive block with zero. Uh, so, so when students go through, through this, they, they, they get this uh, uh, hand-holding uh, by the software, which makes it uh, um, very convenient for the teacher um, that, you know, students can, can kind of uh, progress on their own and, and have this uh, guidance uh, uh, in the software to, um, uh, to move forward. We also have this pop-up saying oh, we couldn't complete the mission because we did not drive, uh, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, long enough. So we have to prolong the time um, uh, of moving forward. And then 
uh, we didn't drive back at all. So, so now we're, uh, we're correcting this, um, changing the, the, the code, the, the, the time here, and then adding uh, a negative value so we can uh, now move. So, so this is kind of one feature which makes it, uh, a lot of teachers just feel comfortable. They say, okay, you know, here, uh, students are just gonna uh, work on their own. And, uh, uh, you know, one, one of the comments that um, I liked in, in one of the webinars that one of our teachers did for us, is they said, I will feel comfortable to just walk to the principal's office during class and go and collect my mail because I know that the students are going to be busy with uh, with you know solving some of these uh, missions. Um, the other thing here, from from a class management point of view, so um, the ability to see uh, you know how students are doing, and um, uh, it could be for for a specific uh, you know for a specific. Uh, um, uh, a, a block of missions. So this is uh, under navigation and you can see how the students are progressing. And if you have certain students that are uh, uh, finding it a little bit more difficult and how you, um, you know, how, how you can, you, you could flip your classroom and, and kind of concentrate on working with these students, or you could do some peer to peer and ask uh, some of these students to work with these. So it gives you a good uh, overview of what's happening in your class. Uh, you can also do a deep dive into a student, see how many attempts they uh, they needed to solve the missions, how long it took them to solve the missions, um, and, and through that you can um, you can uh, um, uh, grade the students. Um, the other thing that you have here, which is pretty cool, is uh, a project area. Um, sometimes, uh, and this is all, if, if you notice, a lot of the missions are closed ended in the sense that they they already have kind of a, a uh, um, a pre-designed uh, uh, objective and, and a target, um, and, and that's you know to make again the, the the teaching easy. So so we come up with the with the exercise, and then um, in the classroom you can you can uh, um, um, uh, solve it. But some teachers like a different style of teaching where they want to, for example, uh, come up with a project of their own. So this would be kind of an open-ended type of. Um, of uh, uh, area where I don't have any kind of, uh, I, I could have different uh, objects on the field, but, um, uh, but it's for the, for the instructor to kind of determine what it is that they want to teach. So here, for example, um, I, you know, we're, we're, uh, um, we are declaring uh, um, uh, uh, steering here as a variable, and then we're, we're adding uh, uh, one to the steering every, every half second and we're asking students, okay, how's this gonna look if I um, uh, use the robot to, uh, to draw on, a, on you know, kind of an, an empty surface? What kind of uh, visual am I gonna get? And how is this visual gonna change if I, uh, you know, if I change the time? So one, once, once I uh, run the code, um, I'm able to, uh, you know, start seeing uh, um, a certain visual. Um, and, uh, you know, th this will change if I change the variable of, of the time, if it's not going to be every half second, if it's going to be uh, a second or, or uh, uh, you know, you can play around with it. But, you know, it's, it's a nice project that you're doing with uh, with your students and you're using the code to, uh, um, you know, to, to visualize something on the screen. And it, it, it's not, you know, it's not a mission. So it's not uh, it's a different uh, uh, approach. Um, and then uh, finally here, we have the scoreboard and this, uh, this ties into, um, uh, Steve, to what you said about, you know, about, being, uh, uh, about being competitive. And here you see these leaderboards, uh, which have been, uh, you know, huge in, in, in motivating. Um, and it's, it, you know, it could be something that is, is private for the teacher just to see how, they're, how, how the students are doing in the classroom or what we've done in competitions is we've made public leaderboards where you could see the, the, the name of the school and um, how, you know what's the aggregate score for the school and now it's uh, a school versus school on all these uh, um, you know challenges so it, it, it's it's you know uh, 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 taking the learning into um, into kind of a uh, uh, a totally different experience where students are coming to the classroom. Uh, and they're telling the teacher, look, we must start working on our missions because we don't want to be behind on the leader uh -huh. in our competition. So now, with, with 
that, you know, does it show just the school name or the class name rather than the students when when you're showing the public leaderboard? Yeah, so so you, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have uh, either yeah it could be the the class name or the club name or or the uh, or the school name. We 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 um, we've seen we tried to initially have um, uh, you know you can't have a leaderboard for for everything, right? So so uh, if you had schools, then some schools would would participate just with their STEM class, and others would participate with the entire school, um, and then you'd have um, uh, uh, you know smaller clubs. So w what we've done in in, in our last season um, is we've uh, just uh, made a class or a club kind of the, the, the common denominator. And uh, 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 what we've created, which seemed to be very successful, is even a competition in the school. So we, we, um, we the, the way that the competition is structured is that you have um, an earlier uh, um, uh, a boot camp, which is uh, all about learning. And kind of uh, for those that have not, you know, that are not, uh, um, uh, Part of our, our our schools or, or did not go through our curriculum, so they have uh, some time which in the boot camp to kind of uh, uh, learn or, or for some of our existing schools to refresh their their skills, and then you have um, uh, several levels of qualifiers in which um, you see uh, you know which schools are 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 working hard and 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 kind of uh, um, scoring high on 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 the points, and then uh, what we've done this past year is we've created an in school finals. And the in-school finals is great for, for two different types of, of uh, uh, one is for a school that has multiple classes and multiple teachers. Uh, they can compete within the school and you wouldn't believe how competitive the teachers are, which is, which is, uh, which is really nice to see because they, yeah. they uh, each one's no, one. No, I, no, I believe it. <laughs> yeah. What I'd love to see is, I'm just trying to think this through and maybe we could think this through right here is I'd love to see a real simple like COVID challenge where we invite clubs, you know, of, and I guess I'm just trying to think when, if you were to do it as a competition and it was club based, is there a number of students that like maximum that could be in a club that's competing? Is that how it's set up? Cause I'd love to just shoot something out there, especially with some of the people excited from this stream to say, Hey, let's just get some kids involved. Let's get them on the platform. Let's, you know, let them go at it and and kind of have this fun, um, you know, month long or something competition. What would be the easiest way for us to start something like that and and kind of promote it and whatnot? So so anything which is uh, you know club or class size. So it could be anywhere between fifteen to to twenty five students. Uh, that that could be a good size uh, uh, because you know at the end of the day you want to create some sort of uh, scoring mechanism yeah. and. Uh, uh, usually you'd, you'd have some sort of average uh, score between the different uh, uh, students in, 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 in the club um, because the whole idea here is that uh, each student is going to work, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, on their own and, and you could have, uh, you know, uh, each student uh, learning. So it, 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 that, yeah. that's, the, that's the idea. So if, if we do something like that and that's something that we're planning. So we, as I mentioned at the beginning of the, of, of the conversation here, it, it, it's it's taking schools some time to kind of uh, roll out their plans and 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 uh, get into uh, learning mode. So what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of schools that have signed up. Uh, some have kind of jumped straight in. Um, a lot of others, uh, the, the, the kind of the teachers are doing a little bit of preparation. They're doing a little bit of um, of, of uh, a kind of training with us, and and then they 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 plan to roll out in the coming weeks. So. What we want to do is we want to start coming out with um, some of these like challenges and, and you know, it's probably going to be like a, a weekly challenge or, or something like that where you're going to have your, um, your, your, your regular learning materials where you could kind of uh, brush up on, on, on the skills that you need. And then uh, from then on, you, you could, you know, kind of participate in that challenge uh, uh, whenever it's published. And your scores are going to show up on the leaderboard. And through that, you know, we can uh, kind of have uh, a little bit more fun with this. So then, would it, would it, in other words, if we did it that way, would it be that your club is registered, the weekly challenges are launched by you, but they would, you know, anybody in this competition would, would see those, but they would also be able to earn points by just going at their own pace? Would that be part exactly. of it? Or 
Yeah, yeah. We, we, we with our competitions, and again, that that's something that you, um, you know, unless you have a live event, which we do for the finals, uh, the finals of our competition, that that is a live event. Um, but all the other phases are kind of self-paced, in, in the sense that we understand that you know you, you could you know some of you are going to code. Uh, in the evening and some of you are going to do it during school so so we give you a certain amount of time to complete your work and um, uh, um, uh, you know part part of of uh, of a competition that is that is virtual uh, is is again by 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 allowing as many students as possible to, to go through that experience so um, uh, when, when we you know we're, we're able to to we've reached uh, I want to say about 150,000 students with the competition um, uh, one of the one of the uh, um, uh, you know testimonials that I like is is from uh, um, uh, um, in, in, in West Virginia we have uh, uh, we have a partner that is working with both the the uh, VEX, the first, uh, um, and, and with us uh, on all the competitions. And uh, he mentioned that in a single season with us, he was able to get more students involved than in 10 seasons with the robots. So, uh, you know, obviously it's not apples to apples because, you know, with us, again, it's much easier to kind of get on board, but it just shows you that from, from you know, from an inclusiveness point of view, uh, you're able to to get um, uh, a lot more um, done. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm intrigued. I'd like to see if there was like like I, I think the challenges sometimes become just making it real clear how easy we can onboard teams and stuff. But I I would love to participate in something. I wonder, do other people in the chat feel that they would be interested in something like that? Like if we got a you know just started a COVID nineteen uh, coder Z challenge or something. Well, we'll put it out there for sure if, if it's something that uh you know that we can do easily yeah just get after us on twitter send us a message all of that stuff this sounds really interesting for sure so what, what i want to show you now is is um uh so so uh um this is you know uh this is ruby <laughs> ruby is uh is is our own made up uh, virtual robot and uh this is part of uh of uh, um, uh, um, Cyber Robotics 102. And what we do here is we kind of uh, introduce the world of, uh, of, of, of physics, if you like, and, and we make the use of sensors into something a lot more complicated. So here we have, you know, we have um, a, a, a kind of a ramp and, and I have a command of just uh, moving forward and we can see uh, kind of the acceleration, the speed here. And when I uh, run the simulation, uh, what we can see is, uh, you know, that Ruby doesn't have enough uh, uh, power to kind of uh, uh, um, uh, get on top of the ramp, and and you know, so some, some, it kind of slides down. So um, what what is nice is is that you know you, through this you learn about uh, you know about the acceleration process, and uh, I you know if if what I do here is I. Um, I take this and, and now I move backwards first for a certain period of time and then I move forward, then, uh, all, you know, all of a sudden, and, and let's have the, the, the speed open so you can see how you're able, uh, you know, with the runway to kind of gain acceleration and then ah. kind of reach the, uh, um, the top of the, uh, of the ramp here. So, so That's cool. You're able to get, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, interesting concepts uh, um, uh, through the through the simulation. Um, another one which I really like is uh, is uh, it's it's called Treacherous Heights, and, um, and 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 here again, you know, it it, it looks it looks very simple. Um, uh, you have uh, you have this kind of uh, of bridge here, and um, and but but you know it's kind of you can see that it's a it's a it's a bumpy road. It's not a, a straight road, and if you just you know take the robot uh, uh, and, and drive straight, which is what you you know your intuition tells you, um, then then you know you, it'll be uh, um, difficult because uh, you know because of the oh. bump, you're going to get thrown off. 
And, and you know, one of the things that uh, <laughs> a lot of the kids like is uh, they, they'll just continue to see, okay, what happens if the robot falls and let's make it fall on purpose. And they'll go uh-huh. all together of, uh, of the learning because they, they're just uh, intrigued by the graphics. Um, the other cool thing is that the whole, um, the whole uh, 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 you know, Cyber Robotics 102 is, is kind of, it, it's built on a, like a, a square earth that you can kind of jump off and you, you jump off into the abyss with the robot and a lot of kids will just do that. So, um, but, so once you kind of realize that you have, uh, um, that you have uh, uh, your gyro sensor and with the gyro sensor, you can uh, um, kind of balance on the Y axis of the gyro and, and, and uh, tell the robot that every time that you feel that it's uh, kind of pushing into another direction to, to balance it back, then you're able to, um, uh, um, uh, to, to use your sensors in order to uh, um, 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 navigate in, in, a, in this treacherous uh, 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 road environment and, and be able to, uh, uh, to pull through. So, so it, again, I'll, I'll open up the, um, the gyro here and you can see how you know, using the values, you, you, you're able to kind of uh, um, uh, get to that. So, so this is, you know, it's, it's all um, it, 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 a, lot of, a lot of problem solving uh, uh, using both the code and, uh, um, uh, you know, and, and engineering. Um, so, you know, this is kind of, uh, uh, um, this is, uh, I, 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 you know, students are really enjoying it and, um, and, uh, uh, and it's nice. Oh, and I forgot to show something which is super, super important. So th- we are now in a, in a teacher view, okay? And let's say that I was, uh, you know, just doing this, and, and I was, you know, as a teacher, I could not find um, uh, the solution for this. So uh, for the teachers, I have, you know, open solutions for everything. So I could just say, hey, I want to see the solution. And then are you sure? And then once I do this, uh, I, I get I get a solution. So, so um, um, you know. I hope not too many students are going to make use of this if they sign up as teachers. But uh, but this is um, for for teachers. This is a great uh, um, a great uh, uh, tool. Um, the other thing that uh, maybe you know is important for some students. Uh, we have English, Hebrew, Spanish, Portuguese. Uh, we're going to add uh, French, Chinese, and Korean pretty soon. Um, so, so uh, those languages are going to be um, available for the uh, for the platform. Um, and then uh, I wanted to quickly just show. Um, so the, the, these are the. This is part of the of the gym. Um, and, um, so we'll do kind of, this is, a a, um, a similar mission to what we've, what we did before. Um, so you can see, uh, again, the, um, the pop-ups here, uh, but now, now we're in Python. So, uh, again, Ruby is not able to kind of, uh, uh, uh mount onto the ramp and, um, uh, here instead of, uh, Instead of doing this in blocks, so um, uh, we're, we're doing this in in, in Python, um, and I hope I remember this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, so now now you know now we're already uh, able to. Uh, you know, kind of take this to the next level and use um, use uh, 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 Python and uh, um, uh, something that I didn't show before. But whenever you do the blocks, you're able to see the parallel of either Python or Java on on instead of the simulated screen. You could kind of see that. Um, and uh, and here, what you have is is uh, you know uh, being able to solve the missions with. Uh, with uh, um, you know Python from 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 the get go, so um, I guess I did the right thing. I love that there's a scaffold here mm. to go from 
grade three, potentially all the way through high school in Python. And it's all in one platform. It's all in one system uh, using, you know, in a, in a pretty fun, interesting looking environment, um, you know, that's integrated with, you know, robots that, that your schools might have anyways as well. Uh, that you can then go and kind of use um, live, like in person, like physically as well. Um, this is this is really and and like that teacher back end system, so that there's you know there's the ability to perform assessment um, to track what's going on. Uh, you know the idea that definitely Michael Phelps should not quit his day job. Um, <laughs> is was was another thought i didn't want to interrupt you with that hot take but uh i definitely <laughs> saw that that phelps is should should stick to yeah him as a swimmer i was having um, some concerns about him too yeah yeah for sure you'd think he'd do better at this um, it was making me think of some of my students like right now with this distance learning and that's another thing about the back end too is how you can see what students are doing um which is at a quick glance which is really important for teachers right now yeah it's it's super important. I mean, uh, you can't help anyone if you can't see that they're struggling or, you know, offer more advanced challenges to someone who's, you know, who this is, it may not be challenging enough for them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so we, we got to we gotta wrap, uh, we got to start wrapping things up. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, and this has been really cool. I think one of the things we're going to do, we're, we're starting to build uh, a whole bunch of uh, resources uh, in our game-based learning community. Uh, you've, if you've been watching on the Inside Participate channel, you've seen it linked uh, by our, our chat bot a couple times. Uh, people should go to participate.com and check out the game-based learning community where we talk about games and teaching and learning. And we're going to link this resource, this site in there. We're going to link that Amazon future engineer link. We we put it in the chat once before. Uh, I'll, I'll actually put it back up on the screen again right now as soon as I scroll up to it. Here it is. So go go there and check these courses out. I, I think they're great. Um, and again, we'll we'll link them in the resource section and and certainly um, uh, encourage people to go and, and take a look at these on uh, on the game based learning community on on participate. We'll make sure that that link gets in there. Um, and this this stream will be posted uh, within about a half hour on uh, my class YouTube channel and and probably also on the participate YouTube channel so people can watch the replay within a half hour on Steve's channel and within two days on my because <laughs> right. I'm very much slow, slower on the uptake on the inside participate channel uh, uh, what else should I say so how else so um you know you guys are on on Twitter what's like that so the website is gocoderz.com correct correct yes and what what are you on Twitter Go um, at go coder z at co coder z so make sure you're following uh their twitter account as well uh you know thanks so much for joining us on the stream uh today uh this was really 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 cool like i i mean like i said i was pretty excited about this i i enjoyed this a lot um, <laughs> thanks. I think this is think this is a really nice really neat tool i do too. um what else should we plug? Well, we got another minute or so. Uh, the the stream this afternoon. <laughs> I think we're really excited about the stream this afternoon. At least I am. I've been thinking well, about it. I am too. I, I you know, I, I wonder if we'll show you know my world a pale in comparison. But uh, no, no what we're gonna do? We're gonna start a world together. Oh, that'll be fun. That's uh, actually what we should do. You're right. Yeah. Okay, good. So we're listen, friends. We're gonna play. We're gonna play satisfactory this afternoon, um, and and uh, and show you that because um, we can't stop talking about it. Uh, mm -hmm. So we thought, well, we might as well just play it. Um, and I think it it does maybe have some really neat totally. implications for for game based learning. So so we're gonna talk about that too, maybe. All right, everybody. Thanks, Edo, for for joining us. Yeah, thank this you, awesome. Thank you. This was uh, cool. Thank and, you so much. Uh, Everybody, we'll see you this afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Have a good day. Stay healthy. Bye now. Stay safe, everybody. Bye -bye.
Bye. Thanks, Ida. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.